morning. And welcome to the liturgy celebrating the third Sunday of Easter. All the readings and music can be found in the bulletin, so please stand and join in singing at the Lamb's High Feast. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of death, you put to, the author of life, you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He, he is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for, us and, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones. As you can see, I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. We have heard numerous gospel passages over the last couple of weeks telling of how the first disciples and the apostles encountered the risen Lord. And it seems from these accounts that Jesus' favorite greeting after the resurrection was peace be with you. We heard him greet his disciples this way in the gospel we've just heard. And if you look in John's gospel, you will find three more instances where the Lord uses the same greeting, peace be with you, after his resurrection. It's as if he just can't wish peace upon us enough. Of course, his desire to give us peace did not begin at his resurrection. During the Last Supper, the night before he died, he said to his apostles words that we quote in every single Mass we celebrate. John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. So, before his death and after his resurrection, the Lord wishes us peace. This is, I'm sure we would all admit, a very timely wish for us and for the whole world. There are terrible wars taking place in parts of the world, some of them we know about and others perhaps we do not. And violence of other sorts is all too common, pretty much everywhere. And people speak of working for peace, fighting for peace, praying for peace, hoping for peace. But I am not sure that peace is something we can accomplish. Jesus' words seem to indicate, to me at least, that peace is received, not achieved. 
The Lord offers peace to us, but he does not force it on us, that's for sure. He wants us to accept it willingly. Of course we pray for an end to all war and violence. We should. That is part of how we open ourselves up to the Lord's gift of peace. But often we look at the news and wish there were something we could do in addition to prayer. And that's when we are called to remember that even if we personally cannot establish peace throughout the world, with Jesus' help, we can bring peace to ourselves and we can be channels of peace to those around us. And that increases the total amount of peace in this world. If enough people did this, maybe it would catch on. Theologians like the great Saint Thomas Aquinas tell us that peace is the fruit of love. And this means that hatred and anything resembling hatred is an obstacle to peace. This means that the risen Christ calls us to avoid in our lives anything that cultivates hate or anything else that resembles hate. Judging, def uh, destructive criticism, gossip, these are things that block us from receiving the peace that Jesus wants to give us. Charity, generosity, patience, acceptance, kindness, these things open us up to receive the Lord's peace and be channels of that peace. It is a gift he was dying to give us, a gift he rose to confirm in us. Let's do our best to receive and share this great gift of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and of all that is seen. and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the power of the Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge for the forgiveness of sins. Trusting in our Heavenly Father's almighty power and infinite love, we turn to him with our petitions. For church leaders, may the Lord guide them in caring for the physical and spiritual needs of those they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Lord grant them fortitude in defending the dignity and sanctity of life. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all people suffering under the oppression of war and violence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the love and protection of all God's children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are struggling in their faith, may they be strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, may the Spirit renew us in the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they rest in eternal peace with the Father in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those intentions we hold in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Father in heaven, we know that you hear and answer every prayer. Help us to hear your word and to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant Church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Give them unto the Lord. Let 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and trust, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Oh! 
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to participate in the Worldwide Synod by joining in Conversations in the Spirit starting this Thursday night, April 18th at 7.30 p.m. You can visit the table out in Mondor Plaza after Mass for details and answers to questions. You know that I uh, so much appreciate, along with you, our wonderful choir. Today, instead of simply giving them a shout out, you and I are going to ask the choir to help us give a shout out to Andre, our music director, on his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorified Lord, by your life. Thanks. Thanks be to God.